Okay. Um, so you see the fact that we are able to make uh, this type of tables, uh, the, this type of table, uh, which has all these different syndrome vectors, and the fact that we said that uh, this table is independent of what the transmitted code word is, that allows us to start thinking of this uh, syndrome decoding schemes in terms of Hemming spheres. Remember that uh, the uh, 74 Hemming code has total of 16 valid code words. And so we have to draw total of 16 spheres around each of the valid code words. Now there is obviously one received vector at the center of each sphere. This is nothing but uh, the transmitted code word when R is equal to C. And then there is uh, n choose 1 equal to 7 received vectors around the center of the sphere. Uh, and this received vectors are uh, shown uh, on the prior slide which has 1, 1 and 6 zeros for the case when transmitted code word is all zero vector. So the volume of the sphere V and TC equals n choose 0 plus n choose 1 which is 1 plus 7 which is equal to 8 which means that each sphere contains a total of 8 R vectors. Why did we go only up to n choose 1? Because TC is equal to 1 remember for this Hemming code. We have already uh, studied this concept of V and TC. We, we, get, we had given you this as a homework exercise prior to midterm exam number two and then I had actually even asked you the same question that I had given you in the homework as one of the exam problems. So here what we did just now is evaluate V and TC for the case when n is equal to 7 TC is equal to 1 uh, which is the case for the Hemming uh, codes and V and TC turns out to be 8 which is not a surprise uh, if you see here this is all 7 received code words that are received when all zero code word is transmitted. As I said, this table should have one more row, which is uh, all seven R bits are zeros. That row is missing, but if you include that row, then you get the Hemming sphere of uh, size eight vectors. Now, remember that we have to we have to put such Hemming spheres around each of the valid code words. And because there are a total of 16 valid code words, we have to put these Hemming spheres a total of 16 times. Plus, they should not be overlapping because if they are overlapping, then uh, the decoder um, has an ambiguity about how to decode. And therefore, uh, when we ensure that the uh, Hemming spheres are non-overlapping, we will have a total of 2 to the power k times v and tc number of received binary vectors. But 2 to the power k is 16, v and tc we already saw volume of uh, the Hemming sphere of tc equal to radius 1 bit, we already saw that that is 8. So 16 times 8 is 128 which is 2 to the power 7. But n for the Hemming code is 7 itself. So this is equal to 2 to the power n. And so for the Hemming code, 2 to the power k times v and tc is equal to 2 to the power n. Now, that is quite 
are rare. It is quite unusual that that happens. Basically, what we just now saw was that if I take the totality of all to the power k non overlapping Hamming spheres, each of radius uh, Tc equal to 1 bits, together they include each one of 2 to the power n received vectors. None of the 2 to the power n possibly possible received vectors gets left out. In fact, for typical schemes, 2 to the power k times VNTC will not be equal to 2 to the power n. It will be less than 2 to the power n. Uh, and that happens because some of the received vector, possible received vectors cannot be included in any of the 2 to the power k Hamming spheres of radius Tc bits. Uh, the codes that have this, uh, that meet this equality, 2 to the power k times VNTC is equal to 2 to the power n, they form kind of an ideal crystalline structure. Uh, all the Hamming spheres are perfect. They, they are kind of arranged in the ni nicest possible manner. They are non-overlapping. They are as big as they can without being non-overlapping. And together they cover all of the 2 to the power n sequences. Um, and so the Hamming code is uh, one of very few perfect codes that are possible. And in fact, there are only two other perfect codes. Uh, besides the Hamming code. Remember, perfect code is the one that has this equation with equality instead of less than sign. The other perfect codes are the repetition codes with odd values of n and the Cole code. There is no other coding scheme which is perfect. There is always, for the other schemes, we cannot have the equality. There will be always a less than sign over here. Okay, and then the last thing for today is that there is a, a decoding scheme uh, that we will not get too much into, uh, but we are mentioning it here for the sake of completeness, and that is known as standard array method of decoding. And this standard array decoding can also be uh, understood by means of this Hamming spheres uh, and the decoding by minimum distance decoding. And the idea behind standard array decoding is to actually list out all the possible received vectors, uh, 2 to the power n of them, 2 to the power n received vectors, and we segregate them into different Hamming spheres. We actually in the computer memory, we implement these Hamming spheres. Uh, the way we do segregation of all the received vectors into Hamming spheres is uh, basically list out for each of the 2 to the power k code words what are all the possible uh, received vectors that belong to its Hamming sphere of radius. TC bit. So the way to do that, I'll give you a brief introduction, is to consider now this seven possible vectors R. Now we take them as actually vector E. We'll take them as vector E. Vector C, we will now not assume that it is zero. We will actually go one by one. In case of Hamming code, we will take first code word of the Hamming code, which is all zero code word. We'll go to the second one, then third one. We'll go uh, over all 16 code words. And to each code word, we will add this seven E vectors. And that that will give us seven other uh, received vectors besides the transmitted code word which belong to 
it's hemisphere and that becomes one column of this standard array and the standard array has 2 to the power k columns each column corresponds to a, a valid code word and the remaining entries in that column correspond to a non-valid vector that belong to the Hemming sphere for that column, ho column hat. And the idea behind the standard array decoding is to do a table lookup. Whenever we receive a vector r, uh, we look up which uh, column this r vector belongs to in the standard array. And, and then we just say that the head of that column, meaning the center of that Hemming sphere, is the most likely transmitted code word. Uh, the reason we are not going to spend a lot of time on the standard error decoding is because it, while it works for uh, coding schemes which have small n, it, it works for Hemming code because n is equal to 7. It may also work for uh, the RPC code for which n was 14. It will work for the product code for which n is equal to 9. But if n becomes big, for example, in the project you are considering convolution codes for which I have asked you to take n to be 1004, for example. Um, in fact, we saw that convolution code actually is a linear block code and so you can actually technically build the standard array decoder for the convolution code. But try doing that for a case when n is equal to 1004. The memory requirement which will become 2 to the power n will be just simply too much. And so this standard array based decoding is a mathematical technique and practically it works for small values of n but some of the powerful coding schemes which have large values of n are not uh, reliant on this standard array decoder. The reason I included it here is because uh, this is actually um, a direct implementation of uh, minimum distance decoding scheme by implementing all of the possible 2 to the power k Hemming spheres of radius tc bits around each transmitted code word. 